wow, this works way better than expected. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing today? I want to check out with you character consistency on mid journey because it is really simple to do, but there are still some things to look out for and some tricks to get better results. Let's get started. So let's get started here by looking at this image. As you can see on the left, I have here a character design of this really beautiful looking woman in her outfit. You see these golden decorations, the leaf on her shoulder, the stick she has with her, that blue and red design, and also these leather bound shoes down here. Very good. Now this is then produced in another creation in a forest where she is walking. You can see all of these elements are there of her clothing. All of these little details are there. That is really beautiful. But as you can also see here in these videos that I've created from that, these animations, that also here it is very consistent. You can really recognize that character and everything just looks very, very beautiful. To get started with this, I want to give you some advice. When you prompt for a character, I would suggest to you that you prompt for a unique look for that character. For example, in this case, that could be pink hair. In another case, it could be specific colors of their clothing or their body shape, their haircut or any kind of other element that makes them stand out. For a full body shot like this, you might sometimes also describe the shoes they wear because then you can be sure that the shoes will also be in the shot. But sometimes they're sitting down. So you might also want to put standing in the prompt to get a shot like that. Then to use this as a character reference, what you need to do is to pull this into Omni reference. You can click on the image and simply drag it up there. You don't have to download it and upload it again. Simply drag it over in your browser window. Then you want to write the prompt you want to use with that and set up all the other settings you want to have. And this, of course, then will give you a character that look, looks pretty similar to that that omni reference character. As you can see here, because I prompted for pink hair, a black leather jacket, blue jeans and white sneakers, I have these elements in the different shots, in the different scenes. And that also means that even if the person looks a bit different, we still can recognize that this is the character that we want to follow, that this is the same person. Now, there is, of course, a lot of different things you can do with that. As you can see here with this, you can get pretty cinematic with that. Of course, sometimes you need to re-roll to get a person to look more than the person you have created because sometimes elements are not fitting right or they have a different body shape, things like that. Now, another thing, another trick I want to suggest to you is that once you have created the character that you choose, that you use that input image and then design other clothing with the only reference of that original character on the left. Now, what this will do is that it will help you have clothing consistency once you want to have a clothing change in your story. Again, I want to show you some beautiful videos that have been created with this character and also with these different clothings. And as you can see, it looks very beautiful. You can do really amazing stuff with that. But I also have another trick for you. And this is you can maybe sometimes try to use two characters in the same scene. Now, right now, Mid Journey only allows you to use one omni reference image, so only one character. However, you can just combine an image with two characters. Now, usually that is not the ideal way to do that, but it does work. And that's the important part for us. So as you can see here, if I use this as an input and you still have to describe both of the characters with the qualities, like for example, an orange sweater or that he's wearing leather shoes while she's wearing white sneakers. In this case, you can see there is some spillage there. So she also wears brown leather shoes, but also 
also that the characters look a little bit different than the original characters. So it's not the ideal method, but it does work and you can get some really great results from that. And again, there is the thing about the clothing. So in this case, I use the left image and I ask for a white wedding dress. But as you can see here, this is just any kind of wedding dress. And also the design doesn't really look that good. So I used this input image and then asked for it again, because as you can see, this design of the wedding dress looks different than what I got without the wedding dress reference. But by using this as a reference, both of the characters together, you can see that I get an outfit that is pretty similar. Now the skirt is longer, it is dragging on the ground, I give you that. Like I said, it's not 100% the method, but it still works and you have more consistency in different scenes for these closings. So still, this is a pretty good trick to create all of the different outfits you want beforehand rather than prompting for them. You can of course also put them in all kinds of different scenes. Now here's another thing. If you have an odd character, there might be some environmental problems. What I mean by that is, for example, here, if I said I want to have that cat drink out of a cup of coffee inside of a cafe, first of all, the cat is sitting on a table like a puppet. And then also for some reason, there is a second cup of coffee and that didn't really work, of course. Now, there is a trick you can use for that. And that is try out different ratios because sometimes on mid journey, you get better results, you get different results when you use a different ratio. This can fix elements that are wrong, this can fix a composition that doesn't really work for you. This can also fix the body shape and proportion sometimes so it fits closer to the input image you want to have here. And as you can see here, Afterwards, I have extended that scene. In this case, I used Photoshop for that with Chen Phil. And as you can see, it worked really well. And also you can see here, there's a little uh, like a cup element hovering over that cup. I also removed that with Chen Phil. And that was quick, it was easy, and it worked really good as you can see here. However, Adobe decided to come up with prices now because so far the testing was free for Chen Phil so that they can figure out how good it works and also how many images they need. And now you get 250 free generations per month if you want to have more. And of course, you need more than that. You have to pay for that. However, the pricing is kind of strange, kind of aggressive maybe in some parts. So for example, if you have Adobe Firefly standard for 11 euros, you can only generate 25 second videos per month. So that is about 55 cents per video. That seems a little bit much, maybe I'm not quite sure. However, for the um, generations, you get one credit per generation, which is meaning that you get 2000 generations. So that's about five cents per image. So that's kind of okay, I would say. But if you have Chen Phil, where you maybe just have a little detail, that might be a little bit much. And then also, if you look at the other pricings, they're also way, way higher. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit on the pricey side, I would say. But enough of that. Of course, we can also create very beautiful animations with that cat character in all kinds of situations. And as you can see, this not only works really great, but also the animation of the face, of the gestures, of the actions of the character are very beautiful. So this is a very powerful tool for artists and indie filmmakers. However, let's go on with our tips and tricks here for mid journey. So one thing you can do is to create these character design sheets, which can create really beautiful designs for you. And in this case, as you can see, because this is a character design drawing, it is a little bit rough because these are supposed to be sketches. So they are not completely fleshed out. You can, of course, ask for a 3D render, for an octane render, for highly detailed stuff like that. But often these character design sheets give really beautiful interesting artistic design. So it might still be a good starting point. However, you can, of course, add more detail to that afterwards. So here's a little trick what you can do. 
Use that image, crop it to just the character and then upload that to ChatGPT and ask it for a description for that character in mid-journey style. You of course also can write that yourself, but I just find that process a little bit faster. And then what you can do, in my case, I actually went to Korea and used Flux to create this version. As you can see, it is way more detailed. It has a lot of the same elements in there. It's not 100% the same character, but it's okay because I can play around. I get some variation in here. It has a little bit of these little axolotl uh, things sticking out at the back. So it's kind of cool. Um, you can play around with that for sure and then go back to Midjourney, upload that image. You can also create variations of Midjourney, of course. And here we have another character, really beautiful. Midjourney is so good with these kind of artistic creations. And again, I went over to Korea and I wanted to have this with more detail, a little bit of like 3D style. And that turned out really beautiful from the result. I had to try it quite often because of the sword, because a sword can be problematic in where it ends or where it's stuck to the body. In this case, I feel like the result is very beautiful. So as you can see here, we have the first character and that looks pretty beautiful. However, what I want to point out here is if I compare that to the input image that has been created with Korea, look on how really close Midjourney is sticking to the details of the input image. So for example, the staff with this round shape on the top and the two horns and these little two bell things that hang down, all of that is there. Also that he doesn't wear a shirt but has these kind of like leather um, necklaces or something like that is also there and his pocket is there with these like uh, horns sticking out everything. It's really, really beautiful how Midjourney can do that. And then of course you can see here that you can also create beautiful animations with that. So that is very, very nice that Midjourney can do that. And of course here we have the other character, this again created from Midjourney, a different perspective. Now we are in a temple. And again, as you can see, you can animate that in a really beautiful way. And here is another version that has been created by Midjourney based on that design. And again, look at the staff, how it ends with this little leather ending and then the little leather straps that are on there and also the sword, how it is stuck and everything, all these little details, a lot of that stuff is in there and then you can animate that. So very, very beautiful. So overall, I have to say that the process and the simplicity of the process with Midjourney to have these consistent characters is very amazing. You can do really, really cool things. And if you can come up with a story and with the different scenes for that, you can make a short film with these techniques or a graphic novel if you want to. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and also share it with people you think it might help. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.